Welcome everyone around the world to Vision Sunday 2024. Can I invite you all to stand if you're not already standing, if you're physically able in every auditorium around the world as we pray together. And as you do, please give a warm welcome to everyone in your room and everyone else around the world. We welcome now everyone in Malaysia, in Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, Cambodia, Hong Kong, Sri Lanka, India, Dubai, United Kingdom, South Africa, Botswana, Zambia, Burundi, Mexico, and to everyone in our online campuses around the nations of the world, we welcome all of you. So come on, while we stand, let's pray together. Father, we thank you that today your word would truly awaken it would enlighten and Lord, let good seed fall on good soil. And we declare that this message, Lord, will not just be words from my mouth, but it'll be your voice in the hearts of everyone who needs to hear it. Father, we thank you for all that you've done, but God, no one is here by accident. And I thank you that every person, young and old, from the newest visitor to the longest standing connected person in our church, Lord, all of us would be at your feet receiving what you have to say. We welcome it with faith and focus in Jesus' name. And everybody around the world said, Amen, Amen. Go on, go ahead and take your seats. Before your local pastor gets up to share vision for your location in 2024, I wanna talk for a few moments about something that I Hope marks you in a really personal and profound way this year. Because what I'm about to share is the wonderful essence and the privilege of our faith. I really hope it's the theme for your year. And that is intimacy with God. Intimacy with God is a concept that seemed so foreign as I was growing up. I grew up in a God-fearing house and we went to church. But my early image of God was a divine being, although powerful and sovereign, definitely distant and removed. Firstly, I couldn't see Him, which made Him distant. Secondly, I couldn't understand why God didn't intervene more dramatically in some of the atrocities and tragedies that our world goes through on a regular basis. I understand that God gave humanity free will and mankind has made choices that have ruined our world, resulting in war, poverty, cruelty, and oppression. I also understand that our sin nature means that our fallen world is inherently broken. Despite these mitigating factors, which does explain our planet's pain, my question was this. God, if you love everyone, if you love the world, why aren't you more involved with everything that is going on? Certainly, you could be as in as involved as the accounts that we read in the Bible, but it wasn't seeming to be my experience. And this wasn't me arrogantly asserting that I knew better than God, but it seemed like a fair question. My only answer to that question was that while God is real, He's fine with being distant and removed, even if He's sovereign. And yet when we went to our first church in Perth, which today has become Kingdom City Canning Vale, the pastor then talked about God in a way that confounded my young and immature image of God. He talked in a way like he knew God and God knew him. And that set off a desire to know God, this God who was intimate and involved. And I wanted to now explore how involved God could be in my life. And I'm still on that journey today. When I knew God was intimate and involved to those who wanted Him, to those who would seek Him, I decided from then that my life was gonna be a pursuit of intimacy with God. Whether single or married, rich or poor, whether a lawyer or pastor, I wanted intimacy with God. If God could be known, I wanted to know Him. God doesn't wanna be studied, He wants to be known. God doesn't wanna be used, he wants to be known. And we get an insight into the Apostle Paul's desire to know God. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, this is what the Scripture says. But all these things that I once thought very worthwhile, now I've thrown them all away so that I can put my trust and hope in Christ alone. 
Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the priceless gain of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I have put aside all else, counting it worth less than nothing in order that I can have Christ. The word knowing there, knowing Christ, isn't an intellectual knowing, it's a relational knowing. It's the same word used for the closeness of an intimate sexual union between a husband and a wife, which means that you can actually know God in a tender way that surpasses even the closest relationship you will ever have on earth. To know Christ is a journey of intimacy. And you hear Paul's longing for this in those two verses. Everything else he thought worthwhile, he counts them worth less than nothing compared to knowing God. Paul accomplished a lot. It's not that whatever you've accomplished is worth nothing, but compared to the exhilaration and awe of genuinely knowing God and pursuing a tender intimacy with God, it feels like less than nothing. Intimacy with God is vulnerability before God, raw honesty with God, hunger for His presence, and a desire to be with Him. And there is no greater pursuit in life. Intimacy with God includes study, but it's deeper than that. It includes Sunday worship, but it's deeper than that. Why not make 2024 the year that your relationship with God goes deeper than ever before? Do not disqualify yourself from this amazing invitation. God is longing for you more than you are longing for Him. James chapter 4, verse 8 says, Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Jeremiah 29 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. The reward of pursuing intimacy with God is the joy of being close to God. And if that was the only benefit, it would be the greatest benefit without peer. But Scripture promises so much to those who would seek intimacy with God. Those who wait on Him, those who set their affection and attention toward Him. Here is a few benefits that are stored up for those who are intimate with God. Number one, divine direction. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. The word acknowledge is the same root word as knowing God. Know, acknowledge, knowing God. Not a token acknowledgement like the Grammys. I'd like to acknowledge my friends and my fans. No, no, not, not a token acknowledgement. In all your ways, know God. That's what the scripture means. In all your ways, know God and He shall direct your path. There'd be so many of us this year seeking the direction of God in a particular area for this year. For your relationships or for your career or relocation or what is in store soon. God, I wanna know your plan. I wanna know your path for me. I know I'm seeking direction. I'm sure you are. But rather than seeking direction from God, why not seek intimacy with God? Because He will direct your path. In all your ways, know God. And He will direct your path. There's divine direction in store for anyone who would know God. Secondly, renewed strength. Renewed strength. Isaiah 40, 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord isn't a passive passing of time. It's the active and focused pursuit of God Himself. And when you do this, God's promise is that I will renew your strength. You will run and not be weary. If you're feeling weary, don't seek strength, seek God. Because those who wait upon Him will have their strength renewed. Intimacy with God gives you divine direction. It will renew your strength. And number three, it leads to great exploits. Look at this verse in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. But they that know, there's the word again, they that know their God shall be strong, which we just heard, and do great exploits. Again, they that know their God. The promise of strength is here, but additionally, you'll do great exploits. 
I know in my life, the stark difference, it is so predictable. The difference when I spend time with God at the start of the day and when I don't, or it's just on the side. It actually affects my productivity in a scaringly predictable way. And I don't know what great exploits God has in store for your future, but I'll tell you this, it belongs to those who know their God. See, I'm believing for you that 2024 will be a year of increase, blessing, favor, multiplication, a year of innovation and a year of influence, creativity, solutions, God ideas, wisdom, access, open doors. You know, whatever your role in life and you're looking for solutions and God, I need a breakthrough in my workplace. Don't just seek solutions, seek intimacy with God. And I believe you will do great exploits. I believe in the secret place, he will download strategies, supernatural keys to see great exploits more than we have ever seen. To know God, to long for him, to seek intimacy with him. He will direct your path, he'll renew your strength, You'll do great exploits. And number four, perfect peace. I love this verse, Isaiah 26, three. You will keep him or her in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Life won't be perfect, but your peace will be. What a promise whose mind is stayed on you. Again, that is someone who is intimate with the Lord. To, you know, don't just give him a glancing thought. Keep your mind stayed on him. And the promise is perfect peace. See, we can't predict the storms we're gonna go through this year, but you can count on the promise of perfect peace if you remain intimate with God. You know, in my journey, our journey, Kingdom City, I've seen the evidence of divine direction. I didn't know we'd end up here today. I've seen the evidence of perfect peace in some of the craziest storms. I've seen the evidence of great exploits, not just me, but what God has done through ordinary people like me throughout the earth in the room you're in. I've seen God renew strength when people have been weary and tired and people say, man, we, Kingdom City runs at a crazy pace. And yet God somehow renews strength. He gives us divine direction, renewed strength, great exploit and perfect peace. And these are just four of the most wonderful effects for those who pursue Him. Why don't we stand? Let's stand together all around the world. Let's stand in every auditorium because we're going to have a moment again before your pastor comes. And I am so spiritually pregnant with expectation of what I believe the Lord is going to do in your life, in our church, through you. If you would just avail yourself of this divine invitation to take a step closer. His promise is if you prioritize me, I'll direct your path. I'll renew your strength. You'll do great exploits. Don't be frustrated with mediocrity anymore. Those who wait on the Lord, those who know their God. Perfect peace. If you're feeling anxious about a child or you're feeling stressed about finances or whatever it is that's troubling you. Perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Can I encourage you this year, protect your intimacy with God by ensuring you have no unforgiveness, bitterness, or cynicism in your heart. Ask the Lord to take it up and pursue your intimacy with God by prioritizing worship, the Word, and prayer personally and together with our church family. I cannot imagine anyone who doesn't want 2024 to be a year of divine direction, renewed strength, great exploits, and perfect peace. And I'm praying this year, we're praying this year for you, that you will sense a shift in your relationship with God, from being only duty or pure discipline to genuine desire and delight. And when it does, you'll see everything differently. Can I encourage you, see everything this year at our church, not as programs to attend, but atmospheres and environments that fuel your intimacy with God. I mean, we'll be doing several preaching series throughout the year, one specifically entitled Intimacy with God, 
But let every message this year fuel your intimacy with God. We have conferences in KL and Perth, which you're all invited to around the world. Be a part of this, but don't see it as just a conference to attend, but as a few days to escalate your intimacy with God. Every church service, every connect group, every global prayer night, every greenhouse class, every carrier's night, every song, every sermon, every godly interaction you have, see it as fuel for your intimacy with God. It's all about Jesus. It's always ever only been all about Jesus. And may it always continue to always be all about Jesus. You know, right now, every time you sing, every time you serve, every moment of every day in your work, at your home, with your friends, with your family, in every space, may it truly be all about Jesus. I search the world nothing satisfied I've looked around for a meaning to my life but I never knew there was a name who gave me life and gave me grace and now I know that there is no one like you Lord who got you
like that.